Hi, and a warm welcome to another episode of Today's Parent. On Today's Parent, we are about connecting you with experts and providing you with information to make your parenting journey a bit more easier. I'm your host, Christine Casina. On today's show, we are talking about proper dental care for kids. You know, when it comes to dental care for kids, it's more than just brushing your kids' teeth or your kids brushing their own teeth. In studio today, we have Dr. Joyce Gitango, who's a dentist, who's going to share with us tips and information when it comes to matters dental care for our children. Dr. Tari. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's very Thanks nice to for have having you us. here. And it's very nice to have you here. Yes, yes. When it comes to dental care, mm -hmm. let's take it from the very, very top. What is dental care and what does it entail? And why is it important for us to take care of our children's teeth? Sure. So dental care is quite important. And we always say dental care starts at home. That's the most important place. So we always, uh, uh, we always tell our parents, you know, you have to make sure that, you know, your children brush your teeth twice a day. And they have to floss too, which is not quite common, but we are trying to make it common now. And also nutrition is a big thing, you okay. know, what your children leave in the morning to go to school, you know, what they carry in their bags. It's very important too, and it all encompasses with the whole dental care package. Right. So dental care starts at home. We enforce it, we motivate, and we make sure that our kids have healthy and strong teeth for a lifetime. As dental practitioners, your work is to enforce. But then even before getting to enforcing, let's talk when, when babies are small, when kids are small, and their first teeth come out. When do we start, when do we need to start taking care of our, you know, our, our baby's teeth? Do we do it at the point of baby teeth, or do we, do we wait for them to come out and wait for the permanent teeth? Where do we start from? So most, uh, we usually recommend parents to bring the children in when their first teeth come in. Okay. So around six months, but we always just tell them by the first birthday, have them come in for their check. But it's not only just a checkup, but it's also education. Okay. Because we are in the business of preventing dental disease. So once they see their teeth coming in, they can bring them in, but at least by the first birthday, they should have visited their dentist. As a parent, I'm trying to understand why at one year, you know, at six months, one year, I need to come and see you because, you know, we come from, from a place, most of us come from a place, I come to see an, a dentist when there is a problem. So how do you, how do you bust that culture where we come to see you when, you know, our teeth are decaying or we are in pain? So for me, prevention is the biggest thing in my clinic. Right. We focus on prevention and primary dental care. Um, because obviously, if we do prevent uh, situations happening, then it means that we're not going to be dealing with problems that the kids are going to come with later. Right. So usually in their first visit, we usually just slightly clean their teeth with some gentle brushes that we use in the clinic. But then we also now start talking, we have this avenue to talk to the parents about brushing techniques, you know, okay. and, you know, when to start using fluoride toothpaste, because once they're young, they, we don't do fluoride toothpaste okay. until they're about two years old, but okay. mostly the technique, but also now some of the things that are happening now are things like, I don't know if you've heard of baby bottle carries, the nursing carries. No, I so it's, that. it's dental decay that is caused by um, the parents putting their children to sleep with a bottle right. and their children come up with all this decay on their teeth even before they're two years old. So for us, it's an avenue to help stop certain behaviors before they become a problem. Okay. Because obviously, you know, we know dentistry is also very expensive. So if we can avoid you paying um, high prices yeah. on dental care, it's, it's a big thing for us. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So at six months, how do you brush, how do you brush a baby's teeth so you at have, home? Because I've come to your place and mm -hmm. shown me I just I'm, I'm trying to imagine for a mom at home was watching how do you do that so usually I think it's very tough for children to be receptive to you know having a toothbrush placed in their mouth right. but you know we always have them play you know have colorful little toothbrushes that we do have infant toothbrushes there's toddler toothbrushes and we have child toothbrushes okay and all of them um, are specific for children at certain stages okay but usually nice you know they look at them they're like toys they can play around with them so they become familiar with them but once we start we always tell parents just to brush even if it's with a towel to make sure their teeth are clean so with a you towel know, even a towel a cloth you know um just a little water and just okay. rub them a little bit you know and then when they're a bit older and they have more teeth in their mouth they can use like little infant brushes okay um they're very tiny little heads are they sold in the supermarket yes they do have them um but usually we do stock them just
just for convenience right. for, our, for our parents. Um, then usually we also instruct how, because it's a technique. Most kids, when they come, I mean, they're so little, you know, so we have a technique which is called lap to lap, and we have the child lie on our laps while they look at the mother, right. and we are able to brush their teeth. Okay. So it's, it's, it's usually not, the, in, you know, a smiley affair, the kids will cry, but also we're starting them, um, you know, on a good slate with their teeth. Okay. Mm -hmm. You mentioned something very important, the connection between dental care and nutrition. Yes. Are there things we can do better to, you know, what we are feeding our children so they have better, you know, better teeth? Yes. Um, so I always advise my parents <clears throat> to always look at the nutritional facts on what they're giving their children. Nowadays, there's like an overload of things on the shelf that are very high in sugar. And some of these things parents don't know, and sometimes we shock them. You know, some yogurts, some juices that, you know, the parents give their children daily have enormous amount of sugars. You know, for example, some packeted juice have almost five teaspoonfuls of sugar. Wow. I'm sure you wouldn't have five teaspoonfuls no. in your sugar, no. I mean, your coffee or no. your tea. So that's what we're giving our children. You know, and it's on a daily basis. I mean, of course, we have those, you know, once in a while, days out, we take them, we can yeah. indulge, you know. Yeah. Of course, on moderation. But then now there's a lot of junk food that we are giving, the convenience foods, you know, which are actually affecting their teeth and we can really see it. You know, you mentioned about um, what we are feeding our children. The one thing, for example, something you mentioned, yogurt. Mm -hmm. When I give yogurt, I have this satisfaction that I've given my child something healthy. So is there a way, you know, even when it comes to something as basic as yogurt, do we then need to gravitate towards more natural yogurt or more natural juices? Yes, um, with juices, I always say just juice at home. You know, just get some oranges, juice them, apples, just juice them. You know, we can make juices at home now. Um, we have now equipment to do that, right? That is but true. even juices you can squeeze with your hands and give them, you know, give to your child that, you know. These other ones have additives of sugar on them, so we don't even know how much sometimes. Not all of them have the facts in them. Yeah. But yogurts also, we always recommend that the natural yogurt. The natural yogurts are, are not... They're, they're not as bad as parents really think okay. they are. But if you feel like you need to sweeten them, put fruits in them. Put some raspberries, put some bananas, put something that your child loves. If, it's, if they love mangoes, give them mangoes. So you can also give them yogurt, healthy, but also add something in it so you can, quote unquote, sweeten them. Right. Yes. Those are very useful tips. Yeah. So Dr. Gitango, yes. why is dental care for kids important? Well, you know, First of all, you know, we want to make sure that their teeth and their gums are healthy. But people always tell us that why do we need to do anything to kids' teeth? They're going to fall out anyway. These little teeth are important anchors in their little mouths because there are teeth that are going to be coming there. And we don't want to lose those baby teeth because once you lose baby teeth early, then that means the teeth that are coming in, they won't be coming in into their proper place. Right. But also, you know, decay really affects children in school. They can't focus. They can't eat properly. And when you can't do that, you can't really thrive as a child. So it's very important not to ignore those things. We have a lot of parents that are like, oh, it's just decay. The teeth are going to fall out. Yeah. You know, why do anything? It does really affect these children. Maybe they're not able to communicate, it, go communicate yeah. properly, but they do affect them. And when they do call and tell us, oh, the child cannot sleep at night, this child has been suffering for a long time time yeah. and we've seen a lot of children improve in terms of how they're doing in school because they've gotten proper dental care they've been able to resolve all their their feelings they've been done but also we don't want to wait for the more expensive treatments you know um, the baby root canals or the crowns which are more expensive yeah. you know why don't we start from the very beginning just coming in, we teach you how to brush. We do prevention things like doing fluoride treatments, yeah. you know, and we do sealants, which we which which protect the teeth from getting decay. So it's very very important to take care of those little chomp chomps. Can you imagine the effect on their self esteem? The one thing we exactly. We think, I hope we think about that as well. Yes. It yes. can be a real, real issue. Exactly, exactly. Because you can't smile. Yes. And there are people over a long period of time, because they used to smile in a particular way when exactly. they are their teeth are decayed, yes. it just affects how they look at themselves yes. and how they, they feel other people perceive them. Exactly. And also decay does cause your mouth to smell. So, you know, you, 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 you're running in school and your other kids are calling you stinky mouth. Yeah. You know, and you brush your teeth in the morning, but it's that decay that is sitting in there that's causing the stinky mouth. 
that is definitely going to affect your self-esteem. Yes, it will. Sure. You mentioned about nutrition. The one thing that we don't think about as well mm -hmm. is where our water comes from. Yes. So where I'm coming from with that is I, my son, mm -hmm. the one issue that we have struggled with is fluorosis. Yes. When we're having this water in our home coming through, we never thought about where does this water come from. Yes. Because we look at it, it's clean water. Yes. And bowel water is a major, major cause of fluorosis. Yes. If you could just um, share some more on that. Yeah. So let me explain what fluorosis is. Fluorosis is um, a medical a dental condition that affects the tooth. And it does affect it intrinsically. It's more systemic. Um, and it's caused by fluoride particles that are in water, but mostly in areas with boreholes. Right. There are certain areas in certain counties, you go to Naivasha, Nakuru, or even Mombasa, you know, for a long time, you know, people from those certain areas have been affected with fluorosis for so long. Yeah. But now even in Nairobi, we are starting to see a lot of people now, you know, coming to a clinic and their children's teeth are stained. So it's very important when you move somewhere, when you're about to buy a property, yeah. find out where your water is coming from. And, you know, you can measure your water, you can take a sample of it and take it to some of the people who look and see how much fluoride is in it and you find out is this normal levels of fluoride so that before you move in you are able to mitigate and remember it's not only drinking water so most people will be like oh no it's okay we only Let's drink from dispenser yeah, we can cook with yes the other one. but it's even the water that you're cooking your food with will cause that will cause that systemic effect on your body and then it'll cause fluorosis so it's very important for us to know that beforehand so yeah. we know are we going to be able to filter out this water because also filtering getting those filters can be quite expensive so yeah, it's, it's something expensive. someone yes yeah, so it's something that we have to let our parents know but we always discuss that with our parents in the clinic too dr gitango yes. what are the common dental problems you see in children well the most common one obviously is dental decay and actually it's the most common chronic disease in children affecting children worldwide, okay? Right. Um, decay is actually just a hole that's caused um, on the tooth by bacteria, it digs into the hole. And the thing is, you know, they start small and they become bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's very important when you, obviously you should be coming to the dentist first to prevent the, yeah. the, the decay. Yeah. But if you see it, don't ignore it because this tooth will get worse. Their pulps are very high, their teeth are very small, so they get decay really fast. So it's very important for us to, to treat it early. Doing a filling is very cheap. Doing a baby root canal and probably crowning the tooth is very expensive. And the worst thing that can happen is obviously removing a tooth, yeah. which might seem cheap to you right now. But remember that thing I told you that when you lose your tooth early, it will bring bigger problems with the teeth coming in, misalignment, which means braces when they're older. So let us just attack the problem when we are at the first stages instead of waiting for the problem right. um, to, to just resolve by itself or waiting for the teeth to fall. Because one thing we have to know, these teeth are going to be there for a couple of years, you know, at least yeah. maybe 12 to 13 years until the big ones come in and take over that space. So number one, tooth decay. Yes. Which are the number two is gum see? disease. Gum, gum disease. disease. Yes. Gum disease is where the bacteria affects the structures that surround the tooth. Okay. So that means the gum. So sometimes you have kids, obviously, you know, the dexterity of brushing is really not the best so they miss out on cleaning their teeth properly okay. and most people don't even know that the parents are supposed to be supervising their brushing until they're at least maybe seven years old right. you know but one thing we see most parents not doing or encouraging their kids is flossing so we have all these things that are accumulating in between their teeth and around the gums and they cause this inflammatory process that's what we call gingivitis affecting the gums and it gets worse to a point that you know it starts causing their mouth to smell <coughs> And sometimes you get some parents who bring in their children because their mouth is smelling, but it's because they have very, a very, they have gum disease. What are the symptoms of gum disease? So gum disease, number one, of course, we're going to have the, what we call the stinky mouth. Right. Yeah? So the mouth will smell. Um, and obviously you'll see a lot of bleeding in the gums, maybe when they brush. Okay. It's a lot of bleeding, but also a lot of staining. Um, and that stain is the, is the plaque, the soft thing that comes in the morning that is engulfing the teeth. So you will know that they have it for sure. Right. Yes. So we're going to take a short break. I know yes. you didn't walk alone. Yes. We have Lucy Moai, your yes. dental hygienist who's coming in studio. Yes. And she's going to tell the parents and show the parents 
how to properly brush our children's teeth. Sure. Thank you for being with us in this particular segment. Yeah. And when we come back from the break, we are going to have dental hygienist Lucy Mwai who will take us through how to brush our children's teeth. Don't go anywhere. Dr. Gitangu, yes. we have a question that has come in from Mary in Nakuru uh -huh. and her question is she is expectant and she's wondering if the water she's drinking is going to, you know, being, she lives in Nakuru, oh, wow. an area okay. I know is common with, uh, you know, it's fluoride very high issues, fluoride Nakuru levels. Yes. So she's wondering if this is going to affect her unborn child. Well, yes, it will affect the unborn child. So this is the thing about fluorosis. It affects the teeth at a certain stage when it's budding. And that is a time that the water, the fluoride, the high fluoride levels affect the children. Right. It's not like when the teeth are in the mouth and then it really does affect it. It's a specific time when the white part of the tooth is actually budding in the mouth. And sometimes we have, you know, we do know that teeth, you know, kids start developing teeth in utero in their mommy's tummy. So yes, so if a mother who's pregnant is um, in an area with very high levels of fluoride, it's best for them to make sure that they are either they, they measure the water and make sure that it's the optimum levels and if it's not that they need to do whatever they need to do to filter the water because right. it, it may affect the child yes thank you for sharing it's that. a good question dr gitangu thank you so much yes and you know just for your time and coming through to share all these tips yes. i know they're going to be very useful to the parents who are watching right and for your team to also make time to come yes we thank you and the team for coming through for this show we thank you for having us thank you we very really much. had fun thank you very much yes Lucy, welcome to the show. Thank you. On mm -hmm. today's show, we are talking about proper dental care for kids. Mm -hmm. And earlier on, we had your colleague, Dr. Jess Gitango, who took us through you know, the importance of proper dental health care, especially mm -hmm. for kids. And what's important for us to learn from you as a dental hygienist? First of all, what does a dental hygienist do okay. before you take us through how to brush our children's teeth or how our kids mm -hmm. can brush their teeth? Okay. Um, a dental hygienist is a dental professional, and what they do is uh, mainly deal with the oral preventive care. Right. In terms of you know, educating patients, creating their awareness about their oral health. Uh, we do clean the teeth, remove plaque, tartar, and uh, do fissure sealants as a preventive measure for the teeth. Um, and mainly cleaning and uh, scaling the teeth, removing the tartar. Okay. Yeah. So how, how many times are we supposed to brush our teeth? Children, adults, is it the same? Is it different? Good question. It's the same. You're supposed to brush after every meal, but sometimes it's not possible depending on what you're do, doing during the day. So we say at least two times, morning and night. Okay. You should not go to bed without brushing your teeth. Very important. So we shouldn't yes. go to bed without brushing our teeth? Yes, morning and night, two times. Morning and night. Yes. Okay. I wanted to ask you, when it comes to brushing our teeth, mm -hmm. at what point do we, or how are we supposed to, you've talked about, you've mentioned about uh, flossing. Yes. You know, we hear it being thrown here and there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we do it. Should children do it? How is it done? Even before we get to just understanding the terms, we know what brushing is yes. before we get to the routine of how it's done. Yes. What is flossing? Flossing is... Um, basically a technique of removing food debris between the teeth okay. and on the gum lines, uh, like where the teeth and uh, both teeth meet, right. meet at the contact area. And uh, it's very, very important because it keeps the gums healthy. Some of the food stuff gets stuck between the teeth and sometimes you're not able to remove that with a normal toothbrushing. Okay. So you'd have to go back and floss. So flossing again, also you want to do that at least once a day. Once a day, so yes. once a day we should floss. Exactly. At, at what point do we start using, um, for children, at what point do we start flossing our children's teeth? Oh, uh, yeah, another From good what question. Uh, when, the two, when the baby teeth meet, okay, because at some point they have not met when they're growing in, okay. but when they meet then and have a contact up and down, okay. you know, and the contact, then you start flossing, and I would say maybe from two years. So from two Eventually. years? Yes. So from two years, we need yes. to start flossing our children's teeth? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Let's get on to the brushing. Mm -hmm. How do you choose 
the right toothbrush. First of all, you, know, you want to make sure you're using a soft Bristol toothbrush. Right. Okay. Then we also, in the market, we do have the age appropriate, depending on the age of the child. If it's a, in fact, we even have the infant toothbrush. Okay. Yeah. Where they're very soft, extra soft, and some of them we can actually uh, use your finger to just kind of massage the wow. gums and clean around the baby teeth. So we do go by the age appropriate. Okay. Okay. Then you want to make sure the bristles are soft. Mm -hmm. So when you're buying your toothbrush, this is one thing you want to check over here. Does it say soft? Okay. Because again, you don't want to buy a very hard bristled brush medium hard that will wear off your enamel okay the covering of the tooth so the you top go for layer soft. of the tooth so yes. you go for soft exactly okay yes so then let's go to brushing yes so we're going to brush today <laughs> yes i see you've come yeah. with a set of very beautiful teeth yes the top teeth and the bottom teeth but um, sometimes we separate them okay <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah so this is how you're supposed to brush your teeth uh, you want to use the right technique okay. to brush the teeth because you just don't want to go in, in and out, okay. you know, like, uh, back and forth because sometimes we end up wearing off the, the gum line. Right. Okay. And so the gum recedes and the teeth can become very sensitive. So it's very important uh, the way you brush your teeth and the technique you use. So we recommend the circular motion. And how you want to do it is go all the way back to the last tooth. Is that, that how, behind there? Is that, is that how we should hold our brush? No, I'm yet to show you okay. that. <laughs> so this is how you, maybe I'll better do it, you know, using myself as an example. Okay. So you want the toothbrush, the bristles facing kind of like 45 degrees angle up, facing on the, on the gum line. Okay. And then you start from the very last tooth. Okay. Moving forward with a circular motion, okay? And you give each tooth like two strokes as you move forward all the way to the back. And then the same thing in the back of the tooth. Okay. So ideally we're brushing outside here and behind the, the teeth. And then again, we also want to brush the, the, the chewing surface. Same circular motion? No, with the chewing surface, you just go back and forth. Back and forth. Yeah, okay. exactly. So you're brushing three surfaces the outer layer behind the tooth and the chewing surface of the teeth. Right. So you do that from the top teeth all the way to the back, behind, all the way to the back. Then you drop down to the bottom teeth here, right? So you want your toothbrush again facing down and touching the, the gum line okay. at an angle of 45 degrees. Same thing, circular motion all the way round coming out to the end, and then behind the teeth, we call it the inner wall of the tooth, and then the chewing surface right there. Yes. How long should it take when I'm brushing my teeth? Is that like a minimum time? Yes. A minimum time I should take brushing my teeth? At least two minutes. Minimum two minutes? Yeah, if you're brushing for less than two minutes, then you're not doing a perfect job. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. The role of mouthwash yes. in, uh, you know, in oral dental, dental care, um, you know, the, the, the full procedure. Yes. Is it important for us to use mouthwash? Can children use mouthwash? Yes, and uh, the mouthwash is important, it's good, it takes care of your gums, but it's not something you have to do every day. If you're actually brushing the two times, like we said, and flossing, because ideally you need, uh, you can only remove plaque because when you brush teeth you're removing the plaque right so you only do that in mechanically okay it's brushing flossing that's what removes the plaque but the mouthwash is not gonna replace those things yeah. yes you can use it and sometimes you really don't have to use it okay yeah you, we don't really need it okay yeah the top tips you can share with parents at home mm -hmm. because brushing teeth for these young ones can be a battle and we don't want to set a precedence where they associate brushing teeth to be some sort of war. Yeah. How can parents make it fun at home? Yeah, you can make it fun by uh, making it like the family you know, time and you all brush together singing songs, you know, like there are some songs we like singing in the clinic when you're cleaning their teeth. Brush, 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 brush your teeth, you know, and you do it together. Okay. And um, 
and also parents are assisting kids to brush their teeth. Okay. Because you should not leave them to brush by themselves until they are around seven and eight, between seven and eight years. All so right. under seven years, you want to assist. You want to go behind them and make sure they're brushing correctly right. and you get to the areas they won't be able to get. That's yes. a very important tip you've shared. Exactly. Thank you for that. Yeah, between seven and eight years, okay. then you can leave them to do it by themselves. All right. Yes. Thank you so much for coming to share these tips. It's been wonderful having you yes. and the entire team. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you for having me. And with that, we come to the end of today's episode. In today's episode, we were talking about proper dental care for kids. And Dr. Gitango has been here with her team to share the tips of what we can do at home. Number one, to make this something that we do that is routine, especially going to see the dentist. It should not be something that we do when our kids have toothache and any other kind of dental problems. It needs to be something that is routine. And once a year, make sure that you go and see your dentist. And Lucy has been here as well to share how we need to brush our children's teeth seven years and below, see how you can supervise and see how you can help them. I have been your host, Christine Casina. We've been here at Little Cribs, the home of exciting, durable, and fun kids' furniture. If you're looking for parenting resources, go to www.supermamas.co.ke. See you next time.